Introduction to ESM UBT Kit Hi, my name is Dr. Ellie Maxwell. The Every Second Matters Uterine Balloon Tamponade Device, known as Dr. Burke's ESM UBT, is a budget-friendly device which was developed by the Massachusetts General Hospital Global Health Foundation Lab and has been used successfully in over 20 countries to stop postpartum hemorrhage. Dr. Burke's ESM UBT kit is manufactured and marketed by Pregna International Limited. Device Components Dr. Burke's ESM UBT kit contents Dr. Burke's ESM UBT kit includes 8 components 1. An instruction manual 2. An instruction card 3. A 24-inch French silicon Foley catheter with lure lock 4. A 50cc syringe 5. Two O-rings 6. Two iodine prep pads 7. A catheter holder with hypoallergenic tape 8. Two latex condoms Device Assembly Now you're going to put the Foley catheter into a condom and the condom will be your balloon device. So open the condom and then spread out the condom. Unroll it all the way. And then, once the condom has been unrolled, you are going to put the Foley catheter halfway into the condom to make your uterine balloon and it's the condom that will blow up and take the shape of the uterus and stop bleeding. So about halfway into the condom, you are going to use one of your O-rings and the O-ring should go around four times. Place the O-ring below the Foley balloon because you are going to blow up the little balloon at the end of the foley. Just like you do when you place the foley in the bladder. Four times around should be strong enough to keep the condom on when you inflate it. And then the last step is for assembly, is that you want to make sure that everything is sterile. Now you are going to use an iodine wipe. First. The part that goes into the uterus is the condom. So that part is the cleanest and then down to the shaft of the Foley catheter so that everything is sterile. Again, you're using sterile gloves while you're doing this part of the procedure. Then, before I place the balloon, I like to put some fluid already into the syringe so that I am ready to inflate the balloon right when it goes inside the uterus. So, I will put 15 cc's into the syringe and the first little balloon I am going to inflate is the one that is at the end of the foley. So, I will put it on the foley balloon side, 15 cc's, just have it there ready and now I can go ahead and place the balloon into the uterus and we can inflate it. And I will be inflating it using this other port. Device Placement so now that you have assembled your ESM UBT device, we are going to talk about an important mechanism inbuilt in the device which inhibits the backflow of water. This is called a lure lock. The lure lock is a one-way valve and this valve keeps the water in the balloon so that you don't have to put a clamp on your Foley catheter when you have got water inflating the balloon. The water will go in but it won't come out until you actually use the syringe to pull it out. So, this is really important part of the ESM UBT device. How to place the device? We are going to talk about manual placement of the ESM UBT. Some people like to place uterine balloon using a speculum and a ring forceps which takes time to gather the device and may be a little bit more uncomfortable and time consuming. You can easily place the uterine balloon just manually using your hands. It's efficient, fast and easy. Help the patient with the dorsal lithotomy position first to be able to place the UBT. So, here is your uterine balloon that you have assembled and this is your uterus. For demonstration purpose, we are using a bottle just so that you can see the method in which it's placed and you can actually see as it's inflated, obviously a real uterus is going to be what you are most familiar with and it's not going to look like this. But we are going to use this for our uterus for this demonstration. And as I mentioned, it's a manual approach to doing this. So, you are going to do a vaginal exam and place your two fingers in the cervix. You are going to hold on to the uterine balloon by the foley, not the condom. 
and you are going to slide it along your two fingers so that it goes right into the opening of the cervix and right as you do that, it pulls the whole condom right up inside. Slide it all the way to the fundus, hold it in place and remember, we have already inflated or filled the syringe with 15 cc of liquid into the Foley balloon so we can go ahead, push that into the Foley balloon and remove that syringe. Now, it's helpful sometimes to have a partner who can help refill the syringes for you. I like to keep my hand in the vagina so that the uterine balloon doesn't slide down as I'm filling it until it's filled up quite a lot and can occupy most of the uterus, otherwise it tends to slip down a little bit. So, I hold it in place and I will use another syringe and use this time the end with the lure lock because I'm going to be filling up the condom. So, I attach the syringe to the lure lock and holding the device in place in the vagina, I will inflate as quickly as I can. Remove it and as I am filling up some, then I worry less about it going down into the lower urinal segment. I push it up to make sure it is still in the right place before I inflate it with more water. And it takes about at least 3, 4, often 5, 6, sometimes even more until you fill up the uterine cavity because each pregnant woman have been pregnant in a different amount of time. Sometimes they have multiple babies that have been inside the uterus. Sometimes they have been pregnant, they have extra fluid. So the actual cavity size that you have to fill to stop the bleeding is going to vary. And that you fill more and more, you have to hold it less and less. And you keep filling until the bleeding stops. If you need significant resistance before the bleeding stops, you need to re-examine the woman. Make sure the uterine balloon is in the right place. It's actually inside the uterus. Make sure you haven't missed a large tear somewhere within the vagina. You will notice while we were filling the uterine balloon, it starts to take the shape of the bottle just the way it will take the shape of the uterus. It can adjust to the sides so that it can touch all the different walls of the uterus and stop the bleeding wherever it's coming from. Monitoring So, let's now talk about what we do once the uterine balloon is placed. At this point, the bleeding should have decreased or stopped and it's time to either carefully monitor the patient, do resuscitation measures or transfer the patient. So, Resuscitation methods, make sure that you have given IV fluid, blood products, whatever is needed to replace what blood loss has occurred so far. You are going to want to monitor the patient at least every 15 minutes. You need to check the blood pressure. You need to check the pulse. Look up for signs of shock. You need to check the fundal height to make sure that there is no bleeding inside that's retained. You need to talk to the patient and make sure they are mentally well and there aren't signs of shock in that way. If you decide you need to transfer from your facility either for further management or for blood transfusion, transfer with the uterine balloon still in place so that they don't have bleeding on the way to the hospital. The balloon will stand in place for 6 to 24 hours and you can remove it once the patient is stable. There has not been any bleeding and we will talk about how to remove it in another video. Device removal So, it's time to remove your ESM UBT device from your patient. It has been 6 to 24 hours at this point. The patient is hemodynamically stable and not bleeding. And it's time when you can remove the device safely and monitor the patient. We are going to go through each step of the removal process, both the observation and the complete removal of the balloon. So now that you have your stable patient, you need to remove a little bit of fluid to decrease the pressure that's inside the uterus and make sure the bleeding doesn't come back. So you can attach your syringe to the lower lock and you're going to withdraw 50 to 100 cc's depending on how much fluid you have put in there initially.
Your goal is just to remove enough water from inside the balloon so that the pressure that's being applied to the uterine walls goes down and you can see if bleeding comes back. 50 to 100 cc comes out. You observe for 30 to 60 minutes and make sure the bleeding doesn't resume. If it does resume, you put the fluid back in and you are going to want to take the patient for an exam under anesthesia so you can see where the bleeding is coming from. For most patients, the bleeding will not return and so once you have assured yourself that she is stable, the bleeding is not going to return. Then you are going to remove the rest of the fluid and this time again attach the syringe to the lower lock. Remove the lower lock because it's very easy to drain the fluid that way. Drain out all the fluid from the condom and then remember you also have the Foley catheter balloon inflated. So you remove the lower lock from the syringe, attach the syringe to the Foley balloon port and take the 15 cc of fluid out from the Foley balloon as well. Once most of the fluid is out, you can go ahead and remove your uterine balloon.